Hello, everyone. My name is Beiruz Mamadov. My name is Kayla Wang, and we're both students from Forest Hills High School, located in Queens, New York. Um, in the past year, there have been many world-shifting events, you know, ranging from the COVID-19 pandemic, the political tensions, the Australian bushfires, and even deaths of many heroes that it left climate change out of public attention. But awareness for climate change should be increased substantially as not only us humans, but all of the ecosystems on Earth depend on it. Especially now as current events have shown that the effect of climate change will be irreversible in less than a decade. This ultimately led us to research climate change and other environmental factors such as CO2, drought, and soil acidification on the size, density, and stomatal conductance index of stomata. It is not new info that rapid climate change is caused by the release of greenhouse gases. Nonetheless, instead of reducing them, the world was emitting 50% more CO2 in 2019 than in the year 2000. And even worse, some deny its existence. In 2019, the carbon dioxide levels reached 409.8 parts per million. These levels are predicted to exceed 900 parts per million by the end of the century. And with these changes, we recognize how there will be sudden losses of crops and livestock, decline in agricultural productivity, and concern over public well-being. This became our incentive to do our study on stomata specifically. So what exactly are stomata, right? Stomata are essentially these tiny openings or pores that enable gas and water exchange between the plant and its environment. They're responsible for 95% of gases exchanged that without them performing efficiently, photosynthesis would be greatly affected and would ultimately lead to the death of the plant. Uh, prior to our investigation, um, we had three different hypotheses, our null, our alternate, and our complex. Our, our null essentially stated that increasing our independent variables would have no effect on our dependent variables. Our alternate hypothesis, on the other hand, stated that increasing our independent variables, CO2, drought, and soil acidification, would decrease the size, density, and potential conductance index of stomata. And our complex hypothesis, which was more of an in-depth hypothesis with a future prediction, stated that with this increase, since all autotrophs have the same type of stomata, kind of like how us humans all have the same type of organs, um, that, you know, with very little variation, we predicted that all land plants would respond similarly to these conditions. Our experimental setup had seven groups per plant with a control, two positive controls with increasing CO2, and four groups with increasing CO2 combined with so soil acidification and drought. The two groups of varying CO2 atmospheres would represent the year 2075 with 700 parts per million and 2100 with 950 parts per million. The CO2 gas was emitted into the airtight containers and added to those specific concentrations by attaching a regulator that connected to a 10 pound gas tank. And this way the pressure could be more or controlled. Using a CO2 meter that was hooked up to a graphical database, we were able to increase the CO2 to the precise amount, and we collected 28 leaf samples every Sunday and studied their imprints under a microscope. To limit any possible errors, in total we had over 120 leaf samples over the four-week experimentation period and captured their pictures under a microscope. With this Huge sample size, we created multiple tables. Uh, this table here shows the raw data collected of stomatal size and density. Uh, to calculate density was pretty easy. We just counted the number of stomata under the field of view. Uh, but the size was much more difficult since, you know, it's microscopic. Um, but we used part over whole and scaled it over 400 magnification. And since, you know, some were open and some were closed, we had to average them together. Um, here, it's evident that by the end of the data collection, there was a drastic decrease in the size and density of the experimental groups for both buckwheat and pea plant. Um, however, the control group was continuing to increase. Uh, in addition, the buckwheat had a much lower mortality rate than pea plant, and the drought groups had the most detrimental effect on stomatal size and density. As you can see, they died within two weeks. Stomatal size remains pretty static, as can be seen through the bar graphs. The density, however, increased in the control group while decreasing in the experimental groups. Therefore, when stomata declined in density, the size could not accommodate for said change, and thus stomatal activity decreases immensely. And we wanted to see if there was a relationship between the size and density, so we created this trend graph. We immediately noticed that most stomata in our experiments scattered around this area, uh, which basically meant that, generally speaking, our stomata were between the size of 30 and 40 micrometers and had a density of 20 to 30 under 400 magnification. 
We also had four different outliers and our R squared value, which was the variance in the dependent variable, was extremely low meaning you no know, 0.01, there was no correlation between the size and density. In order to determine the overall health of the plant with minimal errors, we decided to quantify and average the green opacity, growth, sturdiness, and cellular health with the graph. While we were collecting data, we jotted down ratings between one and seven, with one indicating poor health and seven as the healthiest state. And here it shows how plants in the control were thriving while plants in the experimental group declined at a steady rate. By the third or fourth week, the majority of the buckwheat had died or the leaves had shriveled up and turned brown. Another crucial thing to note here is how only the density in control and CO2 groups increased while all other experimental groups density decreased. With the potential conductance index, which is essentially a measure of the degree of stomata opening and it can be used as an indicator of plant water status. Uh, the way to calculate this rate was to use a leaf pyrometer or a gas exchange chamber with infrared light analyzers. But you know, considering how expensive they were and that we did not have enough uh, funding, we had to improvise. We did a lot of research and put multiple equations together into this one big formula uh, to draw conclusions from. It's further explained in our paper, but essentially the three big ones we could conclude were that if we were to increase the A value, which was the net assimilation rate of CO2, it would decrease the stomatal conductance, the GS value, uh, which we clearly saw in our experiment with the uh, positive control of CO2 concentration. Another variable, the G1, the reduction rate, um, along with CO2 increase, lowered the water use in autotrophs and affected their survival as well. Uh, this was clearly seen around drug groups, which responded most differently and died within two weeks. And an obvious one is that in any circumstance where the GS value, like we said, the stomatal conductance, uh, were to decrease, the health of the plant would also decrease. So we assumed that when we did the qualitative data, the plant um, that was degenerating most likely had a decreasing GS value. And, you know, to see if our data was statistically significant, we used the ANOVA two-way. And it showed that it was uh, way lower than 0.05. So we knew that it wasn't due to random chance. And the other values such as the F crit, MS, um, and F are further discussed in our paper. Stomatal density and size decrease in response to high CO2 dosages to have optimal gas exchange. The general molecular mechanism would explain these changes because ion and organic solute concentration levels affect stomatal size. Under elevated CO2, stomata close due to the greater depolarization in guard cells. And this is also because the guard cells become looser. And according to other studies, it's found that it's common behavior for taller plants with larger stomatal sizes to alter the leaf epidermis due to new arduous environments. And this also makes sense of why the pea plant were able to withstand conditions much longer than the buckwheat. And as for the drought, transpiration is essential in regulating plant cooling and transferring water to allow for photosynthesis. So when there are cases of long periods of drought, the plant's control systems would make adjustments in order to balance out the deprivation. More water loss equals a reduced rate of transpiration by the releasing of abscisic acid. So consequently, the stomato pores start to close and reduce. And this was obviously too demanding for the buckwheat as a lack of water was too much for the system to handle. Our soil acidification group, on the other hand, which had a pH level of 4.4, uh, we noticed here that uh, this caused shock in the roots and their tips were dead, so it stunned growth. Uh, this was caused by high, high, high hydrogen ion concentrations displacing positively charged minerals from soil particles, uh, making them more available for absorption. Thus, the pH level can cause the minerals to bond too tight to the particles within the soil or even affect their chemical form of nutrient. Uh, we believe the inducing toxic elements like aluminum and man manganese, uh, which was in our soil acidifier used to lower the pH value, was responsible for this. So in conclusion, our alternative hypothesis was supported as increasing CO2 levels, drought, and soil acidification decreases size, density, and potential conductance index of stomata. There was a major drop in stomata per microscopic field and length in micrometers. As for the control or stomata under normal conditions, it appeared to have increased over the four weeks. As we made our best efforts in limiting error, we still ran across a couple of them, like tiny air bubbles on our microscope slides that could have caused haziness when counting our stomata. In addition, our demand and extremity on the buckwheat and pea plant were not gradual, especially because in nature, forces like rainfall and weathering do not cause soil pH to drop so abruptly like we had with ours. And these plants were also not winter plants, so they were not grown during their optimal season. 
Yeah, um, we also found that our experiment plants were only C3 crop plants and that we did not include other varieties of plants such as C4 or CAM, which might respond differently to our conditions and possibly provide a breathing room for climate solutions. Thus, in the future, we plan to not only incorporate bees and other varieties of plants, um, but also incorporate other independent variables, such as temperature and altitude, which are also a major part of climate change to accurately predict the response of stomata. Um, this is important because we know that adaptations take generations and although species were able to adapt in the past, climate change accelerates these changes such that species might fail to adapt, like we saw with the buckwheat. And sooner we understand the effects of climate change, the better solutions we can implement, which is what we as humans are known for, you know, solving problems and making the world, world a better place. Uh, these are our references and thank you.